I thank you, praise God, for all the mothers. Amen. So if you excuse me, I'm, I got my 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 my, my uh, counter on. Hey, thank you, praise God, for all the mothers today. Amen. I uh, I am so blessed. Amen. To be able to to stand and say that. That there are so many great mothers out there that's doing a great job. Amen. I, I'm I'm proud of all the mothers. Amen. But in as much as it is Mother's Day, I'm not preaching a message on mothers. Amen. I have not uh, been taught to do that way. Amen. I did learn from H. Joseph Franklin, the pastor of Second Baptist Church. Amen. When he was alive, he said, there's two ways to deal with a theme. One way, you can acknowledge the theme and preach along the lines of the theme. Or you can acknowledge the, the theme and preach what God gives you to preach. So that's what I'm doing. I'm acknowledging the theme and I'm preaching what God has given me to preach for today. Amen. I am, I am excited. I am excited about the message. Amen. Uh, and I preached a similar message, and I'm, I'm remembering in this. I got this message on Tuesday, and um, and I didn't have a chance to get back to it till yesterday. So um, let's see what God is is de dealing with in this particular passage of scripture. Amen. Uh, Rudy and family all have a bug. Talked with them on yesterday. Amen. So you'll know. That there are a lot of people going to be missing today. My the family here, that be here on this on the broadcast in this location, they are at my other daughter's house. So I am alone today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So here we go. The fourth chapter of the book of Luke. Amen. 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 Trying to find a plan. I'm going to start at 24 and read down to uh, 27, and then we'll come back and see what, what's going on. Then he said, And surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was great famine, throughout the land, but none of them was was Elijah's sent except Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Father, we thank you, we praise you for all things in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you love us and you care for us, God. And even this day, God, in the name of Mokola Shataya, that you, Lord God, will give us what we stand in need of, Lord God, to move forward in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory for all that you're doing. Even now, word my mouth, Lord God, that as the words come forth, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will be glorified. That people will know that a prophet has been in the house. Amen. Amen. This passage of scripture, amen, uh, um, goes back, back, back. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back uh, for your hearing to bring you up to this point. The beginning of Jesus' ministry, amen. His encounter with John the Baptist, and he encourages and and actually makes John baptize him. In the baptism, we see the 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 the, the, the Trinity. He goes down, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, goes down into the water, into the Jordan. John baptizes him, in the, and in that instant, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. We have Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit, the, uh, the, the third person of the Godhead, and then the Father speaks from heaven and says, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Something to that effect. I might be wrong. But Jesus baptized, was baptized in the Jordan. And all the glory of having 
the, the three of them in, 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 in one place at one time, very seldom we see this in Scripture. Amen. We see two maybe, but never three. Very few times you see three of them together. Amen. And then it picks up with the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke's gospel, amen, is, 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 is different from Matthew's. Amen. Listen to me. Luke's gospel is a little bit different from Matthew's. Matthew's uh, genealogy starts with Abraham, and it comes up to Christ. John's genealogy <laughs> starts with Jesus and goes back to Adam. <laughs> Amen. So either way you look at it, we got a complete genealogy on who on on, on Jesus. Even though Joseph wasn't his natural father. It, it, it ran the line of Joseph. Amen. Now, after all this glory going on, the whole Godhead in one place over the Jordan, the next thing that happens in, in this course is that Jesus is led expressly, <laughs> some, 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 some Bibles say expressly led into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days for the express purpose of being tempted of the devil. You would say after all that glory, <laughs> you would think that he would have something great to do. Hmm? Raise the dead, open the Red Sea or something. But no, 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 no. After all that, his thing is he has to be tempted of the devil. And those three temptations, listen to me, those three temptations are the three temptations that the devil uses even today. Amen. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those three are incorporated there. We're not preaching that message today, but it's a good message to preach. Amen. Now, Jesus has, has been tempted just like we are, yet without sin. All right. And now... We come to the part where where Jesus uh -huh, begins his ministry. And guess where he begins his ministry at? At home. <laughs> he begins his ministry at home. Maybe that's why so many churches start in the house. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Jesus began his ministry at home. And when he began his ministry at home... His home was what? Nazareth. We up in about four, fourth chapter, 16th verse now. Amen. He started out, he came into the synagogue, and, and, and y'all, you, you know the story where, where he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's every preacher's uh, uh, call. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. If it ain't, then you ain't got no business preaching. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hmm? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Listen to this. To proclaim liberty to the captives, setting captives free, deliverance, and recovery of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty, free them up, those who are oppressed, those that are depressed, oppressed of the devil, to set them free. Liberty to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and everybody was looking on him and he said, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. That That's a quote from Isaiah 61, if, I, if memory serves me correct. And he said, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And that's when it happened. All kind of stuff broke. Who, who, who do you think you are? <laughs> who do you? That Joseph's son. Hello, your brothers. It don't say it here, but it says it other places. Your brothers and sisters, we, we know who you were born. Come on, man. You were born in a stable. Everybody know the story. <laughs> and now here you talking about you're the one. You're the Christ. Come on. So, it, now that brings us up to our text. 
Amen. Brings me up to the text. 24 verse. And then he said, Assuredly, I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Hello. <laughs> you better hear this, Sabrina. No prophet, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Hmm? But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three and a half years and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sodom in the, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. The text is read. The subject is, you must obey me to get my best. Hello, you must obey me to get my best. You say, well, Brother Paul, what are you saying? What are you saying, Brother Paul? The text is pretty clear. You don't have to do no digging. You don't have to do anything. What he's saying is, my people aren't getting everything that I want them to have. Hello? They're not getting everything I want them to have. Matter of fact, the unsaved are getting the things that I've laid up for my children. Amen. And that's what he's saying here in the 25th verse. In the days of Elijah, Elijah was sent to this woman who was not a Jew, and she was, and, and he told her, go somewhere else, because God has called for a famine in Israel three and a half years. And she went somewhere else. Amen. God saved her from the famine. Hmm? And then Naaman, listen to this, Naaman had leprosy. And his, and his servant told him, the, 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 the prophet over there in Israel, he'll heal you of that, of, that, of that leprosy. And he went. He wasn't happy about it. He didn't like being baptized down uh, dipping in, in, in the Jordan. But his, his servant persuaded him. And yes, he was able to go and dip in the Jordan and his leprosy was cleansed. Amen. But he was a Syrian, not a Jewish person, not a saved person. The things that, that he's saying here is he didn't provide for his own people, but he was here he is providing healing and deliverance for those not of the nation of Israel. Hmm? Those not of the nation of Israel, he is providing for. You say, well, Brother Paul, what that got to do with the price of butter? Well, the price of butter is high. And guess what? God's blessings are high. Amen. He has standards. Mm -hmm. God, God has given me a word that, 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 that my children refuse to receive from me. Not because, not because they don't want it. But because they don't know how to receive. Amen. You must be obedient to God if you want God's best. Amen. If you want God's best, you have to, you have to do what God tells you to do. You have to be what God tells you to be. And you have to be doing what he told you to do when you got there. Amen. Many people are not receiving God's blessing because they're not where God wants them to be. Hear me now. Hear me, hear me, hear me. They're not where God would have them to be. Well, what are you saying, Brother Paul? You have to be where God told you to be, doing what he told you to do if you want his best. If you want his very best, you have to be there. Oh, yeah, he's providing for you. You're doing okay, but is that all? There is more to God than what you are experiencing. And he wants to give you his best. He wants to give you more than what you have right now. He come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You say, well, Brother Paul, you've identified a problem. Yes, I have. 
let me let me share the problem a little further. Hmm? In Mark 7, hmm? in Mark 7, amen, we see something that's happening, and I'm going to talk you through this. I'm not going to read all of it. Amen. You remember when the centurion uh, came to Jesus, and, and he wanted, amen, hello, let's see where I'm at here. Yeah. The centurion came to Jesus, and, and, and he wanted his servant to be healed. And, and he said, I, I'm a man under authority. If I say go, he goes. He said, if I say come, he comes. He said, and I see that in you, Jesus. And Jesus said, I have not found such great faith. He didn't say faith. He said great faith. Not even among my people. The people that I've delivered. The people I've delivered out of bondage. Hmm. And he healed his servant. Amen. Now, you said, well, Brother Paul, you just identified the same problem. Yes, I did. I wanted you to understand that th that, that wasn't an isolated event. That was not an isolated event that he that he was able to. To, 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 to do what he did or say what he said back in Nazareth. Amen. All through the Bible we see instances, even in the New Testament under the New Covenant, we see instances where God is trying to bless his people. They have ears to hear, but they're not hearing. They have, they, they, they have eyes to, to see, but they cannot perceive. What's the problem, Brother Paul? There is an issue going on. There is two issues going on. Let me identify one. Amen. We're going to come to resolution real quick on this. Amen. Mark 1. Amen. You, you've heard me preach this before. I think it's about the 40th verse. Then Jesus, 40, 40. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, saying to him, if you are willing, if you are willing, if you are willing, you can make me clean. These Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him and said, I am willing, be cleansed. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him, and he was what? Cleansed. Under the old covenant, no leper was cleansed. Under the new covenant, we, we see Jesus cleansing lepers. Amen. Amen. Look at that. The problem is not with the cleansing of the lepers. The problem is in the 40th verse. The man says, if you are willing, that if raises doubt. So if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hello. That's a statement of faith. You can make me clean. You have the power. And that's what most Christians are. We have, we know he has the power. What we, are, what we have a problem with, are you willing to do it for me? Hmm? Are you willing to do it for me? Where is our great faith? Where is our great faith? Amen. Amen. If you are willing, that's where we are. If you are willing. Are you willing? Are you willing? Come on. Jesus, are you willing? Now. That's one of the problems. Now, let's, let's end up, let's end up, no wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, where, where, where did I go? Let's end up in the 14th chapter of the book of John. Hmm? You said 14th chapter of the book of John, yes. Oh, let, let's start at the 12th verse. Most assuredly I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Amen. Amen. Now you say, well, Brother Paul, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, when we do the things that God will have us to do, God will bless us beyond what, what we're able to even ask or even think. The problem is, number one, we don't exercise the faith that we should in Him. Let me tell you something. He, <coughs> he is not to be the last resort when you're going through or whatever your need is. Huh? The first thing you should think about is, I'm a child of the Most High God. I know that I'm a child of God. And what, what belongs to me, I'm going to receive. Hmm? Before we reach for the aspirin, we should lay hands on our own head. Hello? Come on here. Be, be, before we consult a physician, we should pray and ask God to heal us. Hello? Before we do anything, make any decisions, we should pray and ask the Lord. We're not doing that. And, then, and one of the reasons we don't do that, hello, listen to this. There is not an acute, listen to this, acute awareness of the power that rests in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. He has sent the Holy Spirit to live in us, to lead us and to guide us. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. And yet, many, many, too many, don't call on him when it's time for decision time. What should I do? It should be obvious. It should be that you know to call on the Lord. Hmm? If, if, if nothing else, you should just holler out, Jesus, come on here. Jesus, hello, that's a great prayer right there. When, when you're going through, when you see that your back is against the wall, and you say, Jesus, if nothing else. Hmm? You got people doing all kinds of stuff these days. What are you saying, Brother Paul? You got God's people seeking answers everywhere but in the Bible. Hello? You, you, you may not believe it. But you got people that 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 that, 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 that use prophets as, as as fortune tellers. Hello, <laughs> I need a word. Hmm? Come on, come on. Send me money, I'll give you a word. That's what they be saying, and I I'm, I'm, I have issues with that. Hmm? Fortune tellers. God's people going to fortune tellers. Hmm? God's people seeking answers from, 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 from any other place other than God, uh, from his word. That's wrong. Hello? Somebody ought to say amen, 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 and amen. I'll say it for myself. Amen. So what are you saying, Brother Paul? We have the power of God in us. We are, if we're not God inside-minded, what's wrong with us? When, when we get... When, when we find out that something's going wrong, we, we know that the Holy Spirit is in there. If, if, if it, it ain't get by God, because you're experiencing something, that don't mean that, 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 that it got by God. It did not get by God. It might be a surprise to you, but it ain't no surprise to the God in you. He knew it was coming, and if you had listened closely, you may have avoided it. But now that you didn't, you still should call on him and ask him, hey, what's the resolution of this problem? Hmm? Regardless of what the situation is, the Holy Spirit is in us. If we don't exercise faith, if we don't exercise faith, hello, and come forward, hello, and realize who it is that we are serving and who he is, where he is, and how much he's there for us, then 
How in the world are we going to show the world anything? How are we going to provoke the world to jealousy if we, if we ain't living nothing? Hello? Hmm. A whole lot of people are doing some good things, but you can do good things without the power of God. I'm talking about just doing good things. The, I'm talking about doing the works that God has for us to do. Doing what you're supposed to be doing. Where are you supposed to be doing it? Hmm? Listen to this. I will pray the Father. Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. He's here to help you. He's our helper. He's not our doer. He ain't going to do it for you, but he will help you if you will at least acknowledge him. Call on him. Ask him, what is the resolution? How do I deal with the situation? Hmm? How do I deal with it? Hmm? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. He knows the truth, the real truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Hmm? But let me tell you something. The world don't know him and half the church don't know him. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said the world don't know him and half the church don't know him. Listen to this. Listen to this. They think the Holy Spirit is just something to make you shout. Something to make you speak in tongues. To make you feel good while the choir is singing. That ain't what the Holy Spirit. He is God. And we need to reverence him as God. Until we do that, how are we going to ever do the things that God would have us to do? To bring the world to his knees because they see a holy church. A church full of power. A church that's following the Holy Spirit to do the things that the Holy Spirit would do. Amen. Through us. Through you. Individually. Collectively. We need to follow the Holy Spirit. You say, well, Brother Paul, how's this going to help me to, to live a Christian life? You, can, you haven't figured that out. Amen. That's what we're preaching on this week, this month. How to live a Christian life. Hmm? Now, what are, you, what, what are you saying, Paul? You must obey God to get his best. And the only way you're going to obey him is through the power of the helper, the Holy Spirit within you. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Hmm? Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. He ain't got to come. He's in you. He's in you. We got to get Holy Spirit inside me minded. God inside me minded. Jesus inside me minded. Look at what Jesus said. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where is it at? Where is it at? And I will pray the Father, He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells in you, and will be in you, and we will be in you. He dwells with you, and will be in you. Hmm? He dwells with you, and will be in you. He ain't going nowhere. If trouble comes, he doesn't leave. Hello? When trouble comes, he doesn't leave. We need to realize that the Holy Spirit is in, in us to help us. He's in us to guide us into all truths. And that's what every Christian should want is truth. We should want truth. But if you want God's best, you're going to have to follow the Holy Spirit. You can't follow your own thoughts. You can't follow your own mind. You can't follow the things of the world. You can't follow good business practices to run a church. I know that will get that that will, that might make you look successful. But when you get to heaven, you're going to ask to have to answer to God. Hello. What did you do that I told you to do? Hello. You're going to have to answer, what did you do that the Spirit of, that lived in you, what did you do that the Holy Spirit told you to do? 
Or did you do your own thing? Did you build your own kingdom? Hello? These are the questions that's going to be asked. Now, we need the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us in every truth. But if you're not saved, you don't have the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares in Romans 8 and 9, if you have not the Spirit of God, you are not of His. And I ain't talking about the, the, the speaking in tongues. I'm talking about being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And if you're not indwelt, you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, you still stand in need of a Savior. So I ask you today to ask Jesus to come into your life. He died on the cross in your place that you might have a right to the tree of life. If you're not saved, check us out. Check us out on the web. Give us a call. Send us an email. Whatever you want to do. HopeEvangelistic.org Amen. And we thank you for your time.